This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to talk about the Bitcoin miner who mined an invalid block a couple of days ago. Many of you are worried about this, and so I wanted to allay your fears. In order to do this, we need to review a little bit about how Bitcoin mining works so we understand what happened. Now, Bitcoin miners use Bitcoin mining rigs, also called ASICs, to do a lot of SHA-256 hashes. This is what an ASIC looks like, and this is what a SHA-256 hash looks like. You have an input here. For example, I put XRP as a total scam. I added a number after this that I can change, and then I just click Calculate SHA-256 hash, and I get an output. And this is basically all that Bitcoin mining machines are doing. They're hashing very, very quickly. They're repeating this transaction, this calculation many, many different times. And then maybe they'll change the number here, which is called the nonce. They'll hash it again until they get a winning output. Now, what does a winning output look like? In order for a Bitcoin miner to win the race against other Bitcoin miners and be allowed to produce the next block and receive the, the uh, reward, the output of this hash must be smaller than a certain number called the target. And this target is adjusted upwards or downwards every 2016 blocks, approximately every two weeks. If the blocks are coming in at approximately 10 minutes, it turns out to be about two weeks. If blocks are coming in more quickly than every 10 minutes on average, then the target is moved lower, thus making it more difficult to find a hash that's below the target, a number that's below the target number. In other words, the difficulty of mining goes up. If blocks are coming in more slowly than every 10 minutes on average, then the target is moved higher, thus making it easier to mine a block, making it less difficult to find a hash below the target because the target is now a higher number. And so it's easier to find a hash that's below the target. These hashes, there's no way to know what the output is going to be when you do an input. And so it really is a trial and error thing that needs to be repeated trillions and trillions or quadrillions of times. Now, here's the really important thing for today's story. Even if you win this hashing race and are the first to find a number below the target, the block that you submit to the network still needs to be formatted correctly and not violate any of the other Bitcoin consensus rules. For example, it cannot spend Bitcoin that was already spent. In other words, it cannot do a double spend. If the winning block violates any of these consensus rules, even though it won the proof of work race, no Bitcoin node will add that block to its own version of the blockchain because it does not follow the consensus rules. So what does that then mean for that Bitcoin miner who just won the block in the hashing race? It means it will not be able to spend the block reward that it just earned. It probably expended roughly, call it $150,000, $170,000 worth of electricity and still will not be able to reap the rewards of that. It will actually be as if that particular block was never mined by that particular Miner, And this is what happened a couple days ago to Marathon Digital, which is a publicly traded Bitcoin miner. They mined an invalid block. So they did all the work, but they lost reward because they formatted the transactions inside of the block incorrectly. Why did it lose the reward? It lost the reward because none of the nodes on the Bitcoin network included that block mined by Marathon in their version of the blockchain. And thus, Marathon was not able to collect any reward. There actually is this built-in delay where that block reward, the Coinbase reward, is locked for 100 blocks and ca cannot be spent by any miner before that. Here's the block in question. It was block 809,478. And we can see that the winning miner turned out to be Foundry. They were able to remine it after Marathon failed. And thus they earned the block reward of 6.25, the block subsidy of 6.25 Bitcoin, plus all of the fees. The transaction fees ended up being almost $10,000. And then total, when you add the block reward of 6.25 Bitcoin plus the fees, it was approximately $173,000 in today's fiat conversion race and uh, rate. And so this is what Marathon missed out on by incorrectly formatting the block. And what they did, what researchers have found is that they basically had transactions in the wrong order. So they had a certain transaction that spent an output from another transaction. However, transaction B was included in the block after transaction A. Therefore, the block was invalid. And Mononaut did a great job here of showing what the invalid block looked like. The pink transactions down here, the little pink blocks, 
no longer exist in the main chain because uh, this block was rejected. The blue transactions are invalid due to ordering. They spend an output from a transaction that was included later in the block in terms of how the transactions uh, were ordered. Marathon themselves confirmed this in a tweet. They said, we can confirm that Marathon did mine an invalid block. We utilize a small portion of our hash rate to experiment with our development pool and research potential methods to optimize our operations. The error was the result of an unanticipated bug that came from one of our experiments. In no way was this experiment an attempt to alter Bitcoin core in any way. And you can see how they're trying to placate the Bitcoin community and basically say this was not an attack. This was a mistake. Our team, they say, noticed the invalid block around the same time as the rest of the world, and we immediately corrected the error. This incident, while unintended, underscores the robust security of the Bitcoin network, which rejected and rectified the anomaly. In other words, all the full nodes rejected this block because of the trans transaction ordering mistake. And then Marathon went on to clarify, this bug emanated from Marathon's own etern internal development environment. It was not related to Marathon's production pool, in other words, their mining pool. It was also not related to Bitcoin Core. Bitcoin functioned exactly as designed by excluding the invalid block. And it was the nodes that excluded this invalid block. And once again, we can see there's a distinction here that a lot of people often miss, especially new to Bitcoin. The Bitcoin miners are the ones that hash, and the Bitcoin nodes are the ones that enforce the the uh, consensus rules and that Bitcoin nodes will not add a block to their own individual blockchains unless it follows the consensus and rules. And this sort of division of powers is very, very important. And this is why it's very important as well to run your own node and not trust the nodes run by miners who could be trying to cheat you. In this case, it was an honest mistake by Marathon, but this does underscore the importance and the power that's held by the Bitcoin community by the plebs like you and me who run our individual Bitcoin nodes. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.